welcome to today's video. I hope you're all fine on the second day of 2023 in this new year. Happy new year to all of you. Today, the topic, car plus strong algorithm, which is an algorithm that I just fell in love with recently. Disclaimer, it doesn't have that much to do with deep learning and artificial intelligence. It comes from virtual music. Virtual music, you might ask yourself, what's that? Virtual music is the field of research that has to do with simulating music and also includes simulating the sound of instruments. This is awesome because it allows you to play an instrument inside the computer without having the virtual, no, the physical instrument around. Carpal Strong, cool algorithm, very effective. And well, as far as I can tell, it is not that costly. It's a little older. Truth be told, it is as old as I am, is an algorithm for physically modeling the guitar. So how to render a guitar with Python would be the question for today. Maybe I don't need any physical guitars anymore. But let's start. Carpal Strong algorithm. We have a couple of imports. I'd love to go through them, but not really, really in detail, because I guess you might know all of them. NumPy, doing math. Matplotlib, rendering something. LibRosa, if you don't know LibRosa yet, it is very cool when it comes to feature engineering in the sound domain. So everything that has to do with sound um, would be it would be a nice start for you to start with LibRosa. Pedalboard might be not so common is a package from Spotify that allows you to create effects chains. So, for example, if you would like to play an electric guitar, you usually add some distortion to that. More about that later. Glob finding stuff on the hard drive and also display showing things here inside this notebook. If you do audio, you usually start with a sample rate. And the sample rate is how many numbers you would have in memory for a single second of audio. Here, 44,100, which is the same sample rate that you would use on the CD. And here is a tiny little helper of some sorts, render sample smell. It is a tiny little function that renders mail spectrograms and well mail spectrograms before i explain in detail what it does no no let's have a look at them later and when you see them you understand immediately what a mail spectrogram is first exercise rendering a single note with car plus strong here is the algorithm that's all from here to there might not be that much but well the devil is in the details so how does it work it works as a, well, in this implementation as a Python generator. So you see yield, it's like an infinite loop. And at every execution of the loop, it gives us a new sample, which is just a single number. It has a delay. Well, a delay is an effect that usually creates samples by looking into the past. And the length of a delay is very, very crucial. In this case, we use the delay, which is some number. We see in a moment where this number comes from. And we fill a buffer with a length of a delay. So the longer the delay, the bigger the buffer is going to be. If you look closely, MP random choice minus one one means that it creates a float buffer of length delay and the values are there are uniformly selected either minus one or one. If you think about it, how it looks like, we're gonna see how it looks like later, some noise. So it's not really a sound, it's just just some noise. And here comes the, the algorithm. There's going to be an index, which is the position in the buffer, and we're going to loop. So if you leave the buffer on the right side, we start at the beginning. First thing, we just grab a sample at the position index out of the buffer. So the first one, and then we return it, we yield it. Fine. So if you just run this, um, well, nothing would happen. It would just return the first sample. But if you look here, here's an increment of the index, which means it gets increased by one. And if it's bigger than the length of a buffer, it goes back to zero. Very straightforward. If you had run just this and that, it would just always return the contents of this buffer, the contents of the noise. There will be no change and, well, there will be no sound. But the crucial part is that one here, where you also not only take the current sample, but the next sample, which is the sample at the next position in the array. Here, again, modular operation, because you might start at the beginning. This is looping buffer. And we compute an average here. So we take two adjacent samples, and we average them. 
And also we add some decay to make those values smaller over time. And then we feed it back into the buffer. So what this algorithm does is it goes through the buffer all the time. And at each position, it averages the current sample and the next sample and puts it back in. Here, cool example. Let's start with the note E2, which is the lowest note that you are going to find on your guitar. So it's on the low E string if you play it without gripping anything. We compute the frequency from it, which, well, Libroza can do for you. And then from the frequency, we determine the length of a delay, which translates to the length of a buffer. And it's just separate divided by frequency. So we can do the math. The bigger the frequency you have, the shorter will be the buffer. If you have a lower frequency, you have a longer buffer. And that's the whole trick. So we compute the delay, then we create the generator, and then we just fill Oh, just fill with NP from iter, from the iterator, from the generator, a floating point array length would be four seconds with sample rate of 44,000. And then we render it and we display it. Here is the rendering. This is the MEL spectrogram, the one that I promised you, where, well, I don't have to explain it in detail because, well, you can see what it does with a tiny little hint. This axis here, X from left to the right, is the time. So this is the evolution of the sound over time. And from the bottom to the top, you have the frequency. Lowest frequency at the bottom, highest frequency at the top. And you see the frequency spectrum of this sound evolving over time. So you see it loses something. Color is the intensity, where this orange is the highest intensity. Let's listen to that one. Cool. Let's listen to that one again. Awesome. So first observation, this definitely is a note. This is not only noise. This is not noise. This is a note. It's something that has a pitch. Also at the beginning, let's listen. At the beginning, you have this clacking, this plucking. This is the noise that we filled into the buffer and it slowly evolves into the sound, which also decays over time. Like a ringing guitar string that just loses volume over time and also loses um, overtones from the spectrum. Okay. Cool. Let's have a, a closer look at how this buffer evolves over time. Here is a buffer at the beginning filled with values minus one or one. This is the noise. So it's nothing in between. It's only those two values and is uniformly distributed. And this is after the first iteration. So doing the delay magic, the carpal strong magic for one pass through the entire buffer. And you see that now those values are changing. We do it one more time. Okay, there's some, some structure evolving here. Doing one more time, more, 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 more. So every, every picture here is one iteration through the entire buffer. You see, okay, beautiful. There seems to evolve some waveform. And this waveform, because it has um, a specific length and you kind of repeat it over time, means that you get a pitch from it. And well, the wider it is, the lower would be the pitch, the smaller it is, the higher would be the pitch, like granular synthesis, if you well, if you know that kind of thing. Okay, awesome. So that's quite fine. So you specify a frequency, and based on a frequency, you define the length of, of the buffer, and with this buffer, you generate the note out of noise. Next thing, of course, well, one note is quite nice, but you will not survive any song without um, the possibility or the ability to create more notes. Here are a couple of notes. Very straightforward. For each note, we run the generator. We keep track of all the generated samples and we concatenate them. So it's going to be a sequence of notes. You can see it here as well. So always at the beginning, the plucking, high intensity, high energy, it's the noise. And then it goes down, 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 down. And here you see those different lines. Here, those are called overtones, completely different spectrums for all of these, um, for all of these different notes. And how does it look like? Well, here, and how does it sound like? There. So you see that the pitch is going up. Okay, this is fine. Awesome. So now you can play monophonic music, which is music where you only have one note ringing at a time. But well, we are all guitar players, so we love chords. 
and a chord is that you play a couple of notes at the same time. And here, good example for a couple of notes at the same time is the power chord. The power chord usually is some bass note, some, some root note. And on top of that, you stack, well, I would say at least the fifth, which is seven half tones over the root note. And if you like, in order to give the sound a little bit more strength, you also add the octave to the root note. So E, B, and E. It's, well, I think one of the most used power chords in rock and roll and heavy metal music. And here, the same, almost the same algorithm with the tiny little difference that now we do not concatenate those generated samples per note, but we, we sum them up. So we mix them into one single sample. Here, this is how it looks like and how it sounds like. Oh, awesome. If you listen closely, those are those three notes ringing at the same time. So long story short, now we would be capable of rendering multiple notes as a sequence, but also rendering multiple notes at the same time in the form of a chord. But this sound here is still very, very raw, and it only comes from um, the most straightforward implementation of Couple Strong. Well, you can compare this signal to what you would hear if you would listen to the output of an electric guitar directly, which means without any amplifier, without any distortion, without any effects. It's a very, very raw sound. In order to get a better sound, you have to do two things. One thing would be, well, not use car plus strung, but use an extended car plus strung, which, well, I'm going to hint at later. And also you would run it through an amp simulator. An amp simulator adds effects to it. Here, this is a very, very crude, but I think very explaining amp simulation. So I use Spotify's pedal board, I add some distortion, I add some reverb, and then I make, uh, I go down with the, with the volume. So it's the same power chord, but this time with a couple of effects on it. Well, this is how it sounds like. So very, very heavy in sound. And as you can see here, you have more energy in the whole spectrum. You don't have that many holes anymore. Okay, so this is the this is the direction. Again, this is just the simple car plus strong. You would like to do a couple of more things. And I implemented a couple of more things, which made me very, very happy. And I was very, very inspired because I saw like how many things you can actually do. So one thing that is definitely missing from that um, implementation is the palm mute. The palm mute of a guitar is that you play a note and at the same time you put your palm on a string in order to mute it. So it gets a little bit more noisy and the string, depending on how much you push it, doesn't ring that long anymore. I managed to do this. Um, you have to change a couple of um, yeah, a, a couple of steps in the algorithm in order to achieve that effect. Also, another effect would be a hammer-on, where you, you, you play a note, you, you pluck the string, but then you just put your finger on the note without plucking again. So changing the pitch immediately also works with an ex extension of car plus strong. What you also would like to have maybe would be pitch bending, that you play a note on a string and then you pull the string. And this changes the frequency. Also possible with an extension of car plus strong plus a couple of other things like how much the note actually resonates with the body of the virtual guitar. Well, but this is maybe something for um, some future videos. Let us finish this video with a couple of demos. And a couple of demos come from a couple of Carplus Strong implementations that I did with different feature sets. I managed to render the guitar, but I also managed to render something like an approximation of a bass guitar, which is an octave below the guitar. And I also added, just for our um, listening pleasure, I added drums to it. Those drums are just sampled. They are not generated by any Python algorithm. They just come from logic. So here is the first one. And if you like, if you recognize the song, please um, share it in the comments. And I hope that you will recognize a lot of those. So here's the first one.
So that one already made me quite happy because I had the guitar and the bass sounding at the same time. If you listen closely, you hear both. Let's listen to that one again. Well, and if you play that song, which one is it? You also have to play that one. Which one is that? Okay, I was quite happy with that one, but then I realized that the palm mute is missing. So I sat down and extended this implementation, and this is, I think, the first sample that I could generate with the palm mute activated. So it has both, like the, 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 the sounding notes, and it also has the palm mute. Here's another one. Which one is that one? Beautiful. One more. So what I'd love to tell you is that Couple Strong has quite a lot of potential. If you invest a little bit more time, you will have more flexibility. I think this year I'm going to spend more time implementing more features in order to maybe turn this into a virtual guitar that I'm going to use this year in my music productions. And well, just, just for you to end this video, here's another tune, which is not really, really heavy metal, but I think you all know it. Awesome. Thank you very much. Have a very, very nice day.